7,875 pounds, a new generation of Wildwood has graced us here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And this is a group that took it from great to even greater. First of all, let's acknowledge the fact that we are looking at a dynamite exterior skin package upgrade. Getting away from the, what a lot of people called old man camper look that was brown, browner, and brownest. They have brought a very modern color palette and edge to this that because it is white will greatly diminish the heat that this RV will experience from sun exposure. But they didn't just stop outside. The entire interior has a gorgeous modern facelift as well. Normally this is the part of the video where I would show you the RV with the slides closed. But in this case, you can see that super slide right there in relation to the wall on the bathroom to my right. You can't access anything. So we're just gonna skip over that. Long story short, with the slide closed, you can get to the bathroom and the bedroom, but that's it. Uh, other than that, you're gonna have to do something to play with some slide outs. But if you do open the door side slide a little bit, you see that you can fully access that refrigerator. However, big opposing slide models like this very commonly tend to be great destination trailers. Now there's nothing that says you can't tow it. This is typically the kind of layout that you're going to pull to a site and leave for a while. And man, I don't even know where to start. There's so much to cover in here. Um, well, let's work from our top down, shall we? Uh, a full Wildwood versus its x Light Brethren has a six foot nine interior instead of six and a half foot. So it's a taller interior and you can see they got lots of lights, all of which can be controlled independently, including those handy little pendant lights above the island there. They've also, I mean, not just the wall panels, not just the floor, but even the ceiling panel, they, they touched and addressed and looked at every single surface in here. In, uh, we'll talk more about it in a second, but in previous generations, the kitchen countertop was a solid surface, but everything else was a T-mold. So they kind of merged everything. What you have is a sealed edge countertop, like you had been finding in a Catalina or a Cherokee, but now you find it uh, all the way around here, like even in this uh, Wildwood travel trailer. Um, moving over here, the entertainment, and you know, this layout, very popular, hasn't really changed. You've got those dual pushback recliners and boardwalk and park place directly across from your entertainment center. So should you choose to add a TV to it, you can put yourself probably a 40 inch, 39 or something like that in there, and uh, just have all kinds of room for it. But you also have a handy shelf if you want to add some expanded entertainment options, and this is a very expandable entertainment system. You see this awesome Bluetooth soundbar here. If we get right on top of it, you see it has HDMI and USB plugs. So if you got a Roku stick or something like it, you can plug it in there and power it and be streaming media friendly. Also, obviously, we have that remote control electric space heating fireplace to give you some bonus heat without burning up your propane. Now, notice how all of our seat side windows open for airflow, whether it's the rear sofa or those pushback recliners. You can get excellent airflow anywhere you go. But, but... The sofa has a super cool sort of secret hidden behind it like the Legend of Zelda. Improving upon the still and go storage system they had in previous generation Wildwoods, we have what I'm going to call the superior stackable still and go. Each of these totes is now larger. You see from that uh, top that's on them, they are very good about being able to stack on top of one another. So like if you need to stack them up to take them inside, outside, you're trying to get the RV packed up and ready or whatever the case, you're good to go. And I love how it's all purpose fit and intentionally sized to go under this sofa specifically. Now, like I said, all of the tops, whether it's the, you know, the kitchen, the bathroom, the table, they're all that sealed edge material. That's a very significant upgrade from the previous generation. And again, just... I, I mean, I don't know if you could try to shove more windows into this floor plan. This has such an enormous amount of windows in it. And now if you hadn't noticed, we'll pull these down in just a second. Those also have uh, roller blackout shades to them. But real quick, I want to point out, you see you have a pair of dual pushback recliners. So you have sort of like individualized seating. But take a look at the back of that dinette. You see those posts sticking up right there? The entire back of that dinette comes off. It's a miniaturized version and kind of a cool sneak peek uh, as to what you'll see in future Halo RV videos. You know, if you're not, uh, if you're watching this when it first comes out, that statement makes sense. If you're watching this six months later, it makes less sense because I've recorded other videos. But 
Wildwoods have unveiled their new Versa Lounge system, which in a normal, like say a 27RKS Wildwood that has a normal sofa and dinette rather than these dual pushback recliners over here, basically you can convert the whole darn thing into a giant bed so your dinette is not just a little kid sleeper anymore. Uh, you know, if you have a longer person, if they need a little more room for their feet to hang off or something like that, you can get away with doing that on this dinette system. Now note we have additional stow and go storage there. Also, again, those blackout roller shades all the way around here, and they extend down well past the window. You see how no light's bleeding through, and the window's uh, way up under that, and actually I can extend those down further. So if you're using the dinette for sleeping, or if you're back here, if you're using the uh, sofa for guest sleeping, this thing has just an incredible amount of guest capacity. Now you may have also noticed, above the slides is accent lighting, which makes this very cool for what I call stealth mode camping, which is just one of my goofy RV nerdisms. It's number 37 if you're keeping track. But what I mean by stealth mode camping is if you turn off all the main cabin lights and you're only using indirect lighting, this RV is very cool for evening use. Now note those very obvious and easy to see and easy to reach power outlets right here. So, uh, you know, appliances keep coming with shorter cords. It's easy to be able to get to stuff here. Now the... Uh, Sink is a dual basin. You see you've got that dish drying rack that comes with it. You also have that handy uh, high-rise sprayer style faucet. And as long as we're looking at the kitchen, let's start by taking a look at the largest refrigerator in class. This is a 10.7 cubic foot high efficiency 12 volt compressor refrigerator. If you don't know what all that means, this is not a residential refrigerator. This does operate exclusively on battery power. It only draws three amps. It's a very low draw. It's made specifically for the RV industry and it has way more cold storage capacity than a traditional RV fridge could ever hope to offer. In fact, to even come close to that, you have to get a very expensive 12 or uh, 12 cubic foot four door fridge freezer. And uh, here is something that if you just add a simple uh, side mount solar uh, suitcase type thing for a couple hundred bucks, you could easily be uh, boondocking friendly. But that's not all the kitchen has to offer. It brings with it great drawer space. You got three plywood drawers right where you need them. We'll see that there's storage under the island, but they left you nice pots and pan space here and a dedicated pantry in the slide keeps that big chunk of storage off the floor plan and out of the way. And how about a quick acknowledgement for that breeze through kitchen window right there across from the super slide to give us plenty of airflow. Now, uh, up here, you have prep for something. You can, this RV is pre-wired for a Wi-Fi unit. Basically, there's a thing that you can add to this RV that's kind of like adding a router to your house, except it's sort of like a router for your camper. Now, real quick, before we go up into the bedroom and bathroom area, this is gonna be my own phrasing here, but one of the cool things on the Versa Lounge, and again, it's less obvious here on this floor plan as compared to most that have a sofa dinette slide. The recliners kind of diminish the effect of the, the uh, Versa seating, whatever it's called. Versa Lounge, there it is. But you can, if you want to, flip this around the other way so more people can watch TV so there's not a bad seat in the house. And this is what I'm going to call the RV Nerd Inversa Lounge. See what I did there? <laughs> and I almost forgot, I mentioned the storage under the island, but it didn't take a second to show it. So if you want a space for a nice big wastebasket or something, you got a great little pocket there for it. Now with this RV having a six foot nine ceiling, that means that it is much better for taller folks like myself. And pardon the fact that I am just a disgusting sweat beast right now. But again, note the fact that I don't have to have my head in the bubble, my sweaty gross head that could really benefit from a nice cool shower right now. I think hopefully I can go find a, a place to go take a, I might just go take a dip in the boss's pool later. <laughs> but. Also, it's an easy step-in shower, not a travel trailer tub, and they have improved the shower door this year. They're using the exact same thing that Winnebago Luxury Travel Trailers uses uh, with that roller sort of sliding track, that glide track there, and it has a radius at the top to give you extra elbow room. That's a 30 inch by 36 inch shower, by the way. Plenty of leg room here with that angle mounted toilet. It looks less obvious because the door is in the way. And if I step around the door, you can see that they're actually giving us this cool accented bathroom wall here. And I like the fact that they did something to spark up the bathroom decor separate from the living room. 
it's a very residential thing to do. And it's got a, uh, you know, it's not fancy necessarily, but it, I mean, it looks good. There's a difference between looking good and fancy. Handy little uh, extra, in a sense, medicine cabinet over here. So if you've got, um, you know, uh, blow dryer, shavers, whatever, you got a nice little pocket for that. Medications, for instance. More of these sealed edge counters, but notice how they accent colored it differently here in the bathroom. And plenty of room for extra toilet paper and toiletries down here below the sink. The bedroom is largely unchanged, but that is not a bad thing. The couple things that they did do in here, however, are absolutely awesome. So let me walk around the corner. You see that over here on the campsite of the RV, you've got a large viewing window and it does open for airflow. So you can get some good cross breezes going on in here. Now they made this like a CPAP storage wardrobe closet. First of all, the wardrobe is mirrored to really reflect more light in here. You can see as compared to X-Lite, we have a full overhead cabinet, not just a shelf. But they reissued a classic Wildwood feature. You see the little cutaway inside of that cabinet? Ideal for things like CPAP users. You now have a bedside stand that won't jab you in the shoulder, but you can also keep a CPAP machine in there. And out here on both sides of the bed, you can see that we have household and USB plugs. However, to me, that's all neat, but that's not even the best part of this bedroom. The best part is over here next to where you could mount a TV is the back side of what would be the shower. Instead of a ridiculously oversized shower, they went with a normal smart size one person shower and gave us this huge bonus closet here. So we're getting the space and storage of a slide out RV without the extra weight and cost of a slide. And there you have it with a plywood bed base and easy lift struts. We can get to everything under this bed, including the expanded stow and go storage that you see right here. And what I love about this is these really function just fantastically as uh, an alternative to a dresser, but you can use them in different ways. If you want to use some of these for like dirty clothes, some of these for laundry or, or whatever. I mean, you can do all kinds of different things and why not add an extra shoe garage below just to really cut that clutter. And although the skin package has once again obviously changed and will be cooler in that sunshine, the everything that you expected from Wildwood is here. And then some. They have enhanced this thing further. They didn't take anything away. They only gave to it. And what has remained is one of my favorite aspects of Wildwood RVs, and that is the tough coat skin system that they have here. So at a glance, it looks like a lot of other travel trailers, you know, in terms of like it's got aluminum sides and it's got an aluminum nose. But did you realize that the sidewall aluminum on Wildwood RVs is 33% thicker than industry standard and has an anti-scratch coating so that it stays looking good? Additionally, the skin on the nose is 67% thicker than the average sidewall aluminum in the RV industry. So the whole thing will resist wind buffeting, stay looking good, stones, etc. Now, of course, we still have a stone guard. And down here you can see our uh, power tongue jack and handy battery disconnect. Uh, very smart addition to the Wildwood series when they went to the 12 volt refrigerators is that disconnect to make sure that your batteries are not going to die when you're not using them. Now, simple little things mean the world to me, like the handy little seven way plug buddy that they have up here to make sure that your seven way pigtail is not dragging around in the dirt and uh, you know getting all mucked up and, and, and corroded and whatnot. So previously, Wildwoods had absolutely nothing in the way of underbelly treatment. Now, a full Wildwood, not an X-Lite, but a full Wildwood has a standard heated enclosed accessibility. And you're going, an excess of what? You see these uh, like corrugated sheets here? Most RVs have a corrugated underbelly that basically looks like plastic um, cardboard is the easiest way to describe it. There's only a few select number of really high-end fifth wheels that do something like this. They come in sectionalized underbelly sheets. So if you need to do underbelly maintenance for any sort of reason, you can drop just the section you need. And it is forced air heated in the underbelly now. Huge upgrade right here. Another recent addition is the inclusion of a black tank flush on a full Wildwood now. And as we start to wrap around the back, once again, we're greeted by just a slew of windows. We are backup camera prepped. That's a pretty common thing. But what is exceptionally uncommon are these JT Strongarm Jack Leg Stabilizers. They have them on the front and rear jacks. And by only tightening down just one of those, you will eliminate almost 
all of the wiggle and jiggle out of an RV as people walk around. So the strong arm jack legs, uh, the stabilizers rather, plus the LCI stable steps that we'll talk about more in a minute. This is one of the most stable RVs you could get in this class. I would, I would say the most effectively. Um, I mentioned we're backup camera ready. How about the fact that that spare tire has a slip cover so that Mr. Sunshine that's beating on the trailer right now doesn't eat up that spare tire. Uh, you can walk all over the roof, 3 8 roof decking, 16 inch on center uh, roof wall trusses, 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. This is made to be, uh, you could call it entry level, but this is well equipped, well appointed, and intelligently designed entry level. And good gravy does it give us a lot of windows over here on the campsite. And they did something really right over here on the campsite of the RV. Not only is it just, just chock full of tons of windows to look at your campsite, but they went dual awnings instead of one big awning over the top of the slide out. Now there's benefits to having to go over the top of the slide out, but this slide is all prepped for slide awnings should you choose to add shade to it. Meanwhile, you're going to maintain 100% available possible shade for your campsite. Now, uh, that is an anti-slam entry door, extra large handle, and those LCI stable steps make for easy come and go, and even without the stabilizer jacks down, they help the trailer not rock and roll around quite so bad. Now, just due to the way this floor plan is laid out, they're not able to do a full pass through here, but holy cow, dude, that is still a very large, generous compartment, and if you had to, you can flip the bed up. You see the struts in the bottom of that plywood bed base right there so that you can get to that uh, storage. That's a great place if you want to have a little portable solar panel, something like that, you have the room to do it. And just once again, as we back up, I don't know if I could be much happier with the color palette going on here. This thing just looks fantastic. The equipment on this was right. Now it's, it's even better. And good gravy, does it look fantastic. And again, that lighter skin, it's gonna be a little cooler in the sunshine. Never offends anybody. So, if you like what you see, remember you saw it from Halitz first. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.